Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Welcome to Apostle Justice Facebook Live TV channel. And I want to greet all of you in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And before I go into the sermon of today, I want us to pray. Heavenly Father, we praise your holy name, we glorify your holy name. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your love. Thank you, Father, for loving us with great love. Thank you for loving us just as we are. Thank you for deciding as God Almighty in heaven to choose us before the foundation of the earth so that we become your sons and your daughters, your special family here on earth. We give you praise. We give you glory. And Father, we thank you so much, very much, for the gift of salvation. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of the Holy Spirit. We thank you, O great Jehovah, for saving us from our sins and adopting us to become your precious, special sons and daughters. For this, we are forever grateful. For this, we forever praise you and bless you. May your holy name be glorified forever. May we live our lives in a manner that will make you proud. May we live our lives in a manner that will bring glory to your holy name. Father, I bring your people that are watching me through this live streaming. I bring them before you and I pray down your special blessing upon them. I pray down, Almighty God, your favor upon them. And I pray that you anoint them on this day with the fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Father, I praise you. Father, I glorify you. Because you have good plans for all of us. And we are confident that in spite of all the social economic challenges of our day, you are still going to see us through. You are still going to help us to prosper. You are still going to help your people, all of them, to do well. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. We praise your holy name, now and forever. Speak your holy, holy oracles, your holy word through me, Lord. Empower, equip, transform your people for your glory. Using me this day in Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. And before we go into the preaching and the teaching of the word of God today, I want to wish all the fathers out there a happy Father's Day. All the fathers... I say happy Father's Day to you and may the Lord God fill you with wisdom. May the Lord God continue to help you to grow in wisdom, to grow in knowledge, to grow in understanding the ways of the Lord. And especially may the Lord help you to continue to succeed in fulfilling, fulfilling your assignment, your mission, your agenda as fathers, leaders of children, leaders of home. And I pray that by the grace and the favor of God, may you continue to champion for his glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Today, I'm going to be speaking to us on a very, very important subject, discourse, uh, that is designed, earmarked, uh, to help all of us uh, come up with survival strategies, winning strategies, in spite of the socio-economic challenges that we are facing in our days. Gumkoga would say, Sonke, ulo na loyo, ulo na loyo, abe na yo indlela ya keletzite, ye gutsi imbilo ya ke ayende ipumelele, regardless of the challenges that we face, regardless of the uh, obstacles that are before us, regardless of all, uh, is in the number. So today is going to be powerful, and I want you to get somewhere where you are going to write. And where you are going to write, you must label uh, the, the, the notebook or the paper on which you will write my important success information. Hallelujah. We are going to read for a scripture. In the book of Genesis, chapter number 26, we are going to use as a case scenario 
the story of Isaac, the son of Abraham. Praise the name of the Lord. Maybe before I even talk about uh, Isaac or before we get into what I'm going to be reading about and talking about today, let me make these opening remarks. This era that we are in is an unprecedented era. Let's cut the school so let's cut let's let's not the sabago so where almost the whole world experienced what is called a total shutdown, where you know activity, human activity was brought to a complete halt. Uh, introduced things that we never never heard of. Um, called lockdowns and staying at home mandatory by way of law in order to avoid and prevent the spreading of COVID-19. And apart from that, generally, these lockdowns has come with a lot of challenges, you know, to our normal day-to-day -day lives. Um, and you, are, oh, you will all agree with me, Nita Uvumelana Namgutsi, these lockdowns have actually disturbed our usual and normal lives and as a lockdown, it's a new normal. It means doing things in a different way. And you know, as I know, would say, um, from this COVID-19, uh, COVID-19 actually came as a wake-up call, a wake-up call to you as an individual, to me as an individual, as a wake-up call uh, in the sense that it has taught us, would see in life, are prepared, are ready for unforeseen eventualities, unforeseen developments. Umtaba us chigele nje wavele wati reseta ona, staleza mangaliswa global warming where we saw um, climatic conditions changing when you expect it not to rain it rains when you expect it uh, to rain it does not rain droughts la very severe langagavane global warming pa covid 19 and umhlaba but apart from that, it is a wake-up call in the sense that ikfunzisile wena nami ikfunzisile kuti uma upili mbilo yako kumele velube mtu law strategist. To show a survivor. I like to lose, use that word. You must be a survivor. Nyalonji, I'm here uh, live talking to you, talking to us. It's a, it's a call upon all of us. Nglo na loyo. Uh, is fully aware, would say, I need to ensure, would say, despite the COVID-19 setbacks, I must make sure that I survive. I must make sure that my life continues. Uh, I must make sure, would say, uh, regardless of the setbacks, uh, you, you will never enjoy life. You will never break through in life if you are a person who always pass the buck, who uh, practices the blame game, who always look for other people to blame, other situations and conditions to blame. I mean, I always say, if you want to make it in this world of hardships, you need to be a warrior, you need to be a fighter, you need to be a go-getter, you need to be a bulldozer, you need to be someone who is so determined to make it regardless of all the obstacles that are before you. Hallelujah. So now we have seen, good see, uh, so many sectors of societies, so many sectors of our lives have been affected, individuals have been affected, families have been affected, companies have been affected, um, and even the church has been greatly affected by the lockdowns because what this COVID-19 has done it, it, it is that it has disturbed uh, to a large extent our economic activity, our income generating activities. Even the church has been affected by the lockdowns because as I speak now, churches cannot gather uh, the, the same way they, they are used to gathering. Churches cannot come in large numbers. So uh, the offerings that are collected in churches which are necessary for 
meeting, the running course of churches have been greatly affected. And a lot of other people who, you know, whose lives are maintained and transformed and empowered just by going to church on a Sunday, those lives have been affected. Uh, and then also businesses have been affected. Lots of businesses, I mean, were forced to close down, to shut down due to COVID-19. And some of those businesses, even as the lockdowns are eased, the businesses are open, many of them, or quite a number of them, will not be able to open. So we are in a new era. We are in a new space. We are in a new dispensation. COVID-19 has reprogrammed our world, and unfortunately, in a very uh, unpleasant way, in a shocking way, uh, to many of us, even as I've already mentioned. So before I even uh, now get into the word, I want to just say to you personally, as you are there, be busy re-strategizing, be busy re-engineering your life, be busy repositioning your life uh, towards ensuring, would say, regardless of all the COVID-19 uh, economic and social setbacks, my life will continue to move forward successfully. Amen. If you are a student, you need to have your own survival strategies, Gutsi. You know, I'm a student now. Schools are closed. I can't be in university. I can't be in class. I can't interact with my lecturers. But regardless of that, you must come up with survival strategies because, you know, the future, your future is in your hand. Praise the name of the Lord. Let us go to the book of Genesis, chapter number 26. We are going to read um, verse number 1. It reads as follows. It says, Now there was famine in the land, besides the earlier famine of Abraham's time. And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines in Gerah. And the Lord appeared to Isaac and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Live in, this, in the land where I tell you to live. Stay in this land for a while, and I will be with you, and I will bless you. For you and your descendants, I will give all these lands, and I will confirm the oath I saw to your father, Abraham. And then we move to verse number 12, so that we stay in context in terms of what I want to share today. In verse number 12, we read as follows. It says, Isaac planted crops. Isaac sowed seed in the land. In the same year, he reaped a hundredfold because the Lord blessed him. The man became rich and his wealth continued to grow until he became very wealthy. Praise the name of the Lord. And I want to move forward and also read um, another portion uh, of scripture on this same uh, discourse of Isaac. It says um, here in verse number uh, 14, he had so many flocks and herds and servants that the Philistines envied him or they were jealous of him. And then verse 15 says, so Isaac dark well. It says Isaac, uh, so Isaac dark wells that his father's servants had dark in the time of his father Abraham. The Philistines had stopped up filling them, stopped, stopped up filling them with earth. And then when you go to verse number uh, 19, it says Verse 18, Isaac reopened the wells that had been dark in the time of his father Abraham, which the Philistines had stopped up after Abraham died, and he gave them the same names his father had given them. Isaac's servants dark in the valley and discovered a well of fresh water there, but the headsmen of Gera quarreled and with Isaac's headsmen and said, The water is ours, so he named the, the well Isaac. Because they disputed with him. Verse 21. Then they dug another well, but they quarreled over that one also, so he named it Sidna. He moved on from there, verse 22, and dug another well, and no one quarreled over it. He named it 
Rehoboth, saying, Now the Lord has given us room enough and will flourish in this land. Now, I want to use this story, this case scenario of Isaac, to our situations, our life situations of today. Isaac here faced a situation similar to the one that we are facing, though it's different in nature. He faced a situation of a severe drought where there was no rain for a number of years, so there was what is called water scarcity, food shortage, and so many other economic hardships that were associated with the drought. And he was now in the land of the Philistines in Gera, and he was anticipating a kabanga good eight no no hambi like gera mobanago bea petza gunale so me so tindu titi mati mangonong balege. But before he ran away from that situation, the Lord appeared to him and said, Don't run away, stay here, because uh, I, the Lord Jehovah, will be with you here and I will bless you. In other words, in spite of the drought, he is a good problem. And I want to just say something there. Which is when you are there as a Christian, you are listening to me now. You must never lose sight of the fact that no matter the hardships you are facing, no matter the problems you are facing as we speak, as I speak to you, you must never forget that the Lord God is with you in those hardships. God is there as your backup in those hardships. God is there to ensure that though you are facing those hardships, you never get defeated or overpowered by those hardships. He said to Isaac, I am with you. So I want to say to you, be sure right now, maybe even as you are listening to me, things are not okay. Things are not good. Things are not going the way you expected them to go. But no magunjal, I want to say to you, never forget the Lord God is with you. There's a verse that I always allude to. La paga is our forty one ten la Jehovah at the Konunga Sahabi Moba Minang now. Unga Sangan in Gulungulwak. Naksita. The Lord is with us, saints of God. The Lord is with you is with you. As you are listening to me, you must never let the devil deceive you to think that God is not with you. It's not possible for God not to be with you. You are the only one who can move away from God. God has made a vow, a covenant vow, a committed vow. He said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. So be rest assured, Guti. Gulungulu Jehovah Unawe Jehovah Unati. So wachela Isaac wati Isaac unga sanga nunge sabi ninawe konala eveni lelaselwe so miso. God is with us even during these days last laselwe kona le COVID nineteen. And I want to assure you, all those who trust in the Lord, all those who have made God their refuge, God will see you through. Praise the name of the Lord. So I just want to drill this into your spirit, drill this into your mind. The Lord Jehovah God is with you and God will ensure that you are not defeated, you are not overpowered by the socio-economic challenges that you are in and the devastating effects of COVID-19. God will ensure that we conquer them. Praise the name of the Lord. And God said to Isaac, stay here, I'll be with you. Now, there's something that I want to draw your attention to. The scenario, the case scenario, Isaac. The stories of Isaac. I want to draw your attention to the action plan. This is the key. Because in message, my motivation for today is that you need to be an individual, a lady, a gentleman, a man, a woman, who always, you know, enforces or engages uh, in, in, in strategic planning, you know, in taking the correct winning actions. It's, it's key. And what I want to talk to us today is you must engineer your new survival strategies post COVID-19. You must engineer them. I'm using a very strong word. Short when yourself, you need to you, you need to come up with them. You need to structure them. You need to ensure, you, you know, that as an individual, you, you, you are not swept away. You are, you, are, you, are, you are not rendered redundant. You are not left confused, you know, uh, by the effects 
of COVID-19. Everyone now needs to go to what I would call personal drawing board. You are saying, yes, COVID-19 has come. Yes, COVID-19 has greatly disturbed my, my, you know, my plans. Yes, COVID-19 has disturbed, you know, my, my financial economic activities. Yes, COVID-19 has disturbed, you know, my income generating schemes. Yes, COVID-19 has di disturbed, you know, my schooling uh, progress. But you need to go back to your drawing boards. You must re-engineer. Even myself as a pastor, I need to re-strategize and say to myself, Apostle Justice, now that COVID-19 has come and churches have been affected by these lockdowns, what are you going to do, Apostle, to ensure the church worship center, church for all people, continues to be effective, continues to be impactful? This goes, it, be, it, 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 it begins at a, at, a, at a personal level. What, will I, what, what must I do to ensure that even my children are not affected, affected my family? family is not affected. And as we are talking about celebrating Father's Day today, let me be quick to say this. If you are a father, you need to understand that as a father, your responsibility is to shape the future of your home, the future of your children. As fathers who are called upon to be shapers of the future of the children that we produce. Fathers have got a high calling. You have got a high calling. If maybe you are raising children that, uh, you know, do not have a father. As a mother, you have that same high calling. Our biggest assignment as parents uh, and as fathers is to ensure that the children we have produced, you know, will make it in this life. And moreover, these children must be children who are committed to God so that even long after we have died, God will be the backup of our children. You heard what God said to Isaac here. Utsiku Isaac, I'm going to help you, Isaac, because your father saved me. Your father honored me. Your father obeyed me. Your father recognized me as God. So because of that, I'm going to be your backup. I want us as fathers to learn lessons from the talk that God had with Isaac. That as a father, you must live your life, do your things in such a way that your children will become okay. They will succeed. They will do well in life because of the input, because of the contribution, the empowerment, the investment you have made in their lives. Praise the name of the Lord. And also because of the role we have played in introducing them to Jehovah God so that God will be their backup. Praise the name of the Lord. With those comments, I say may all the fathers, you know, do very well. As a father myself, I bless God that he has blessed me with children. And my last born is turning 18 years this year. And I've been working hard in shaping the lives of these children in helping them so that they get established in life. You know, they get, you know, uh, the foundation of a good education, the foundation of good moral values, the foundation of being devoted to, to God so that their future, you know, is secure, their future is successful. And I pray that every father listening to me now, may we together succeed in this endeavor. May we together succeed in these high callings. But sit up and to help our children to really do well and never give up on them. Encourage them again and again to love the Lord, to be devoted to the Lord, to depend on God. Because the hardships of this life will require that God be their backup, you know, as they continue with their lives. As their father, as their mother. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm so inspired by what God said to Isaac. He said, I'll be with you because your father, you know, honored me. Your father introduced me to you. Uh, so even Isaac was a young man uh, who was fearing God, who knew God. That's why God had no problem, difficult in appearing to him and communing with him. Praise the name of the Lord. So as fathers, please, let me say it again. Let us continue to shape the future of our children. Let us continue to secure their future by helping them, you know, to embrace uh, good values of life, by helping them, you know, to embrace the good standards of life so that those children can become our champions of tomorrow. See, doing very well. And even as a spiritual father myself, I wish all the members of Worship Center, all the children of God who are connected to me, Apostle Justice, to my ministry, to really operate under the special blessing of God, the same blessing God has placed upon my life. And God, I pray that he may give them the wisdom that he has also given me, especially in regards to be able to lead 
their own lives the right way, lead their families the right way, raise their children the right way, and also be good leaders of the society, even as I'm a leader of the church institution. Praise the name of the Lord. May that grace be upon you. May that same wisdom that God gave me be upon you, and may we both see this wisdom of God increasing upon our lives, and may we continue to do well for his glory. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, Isaac did something, and this is now taking me exactly to the things I want to talk to you about. The Bible, little Bible, Isaac, he sowed, he planted seed. It means the man secured a big farm land, a big uh, piece of land where he now embarked on crop production. Can you imagine the craziness? Because there was drought, and if there was drought, there was no water. How can you go into crop production, into planting of crops when there's no water? But in spite of these obstacles, in spite of these barriers, Letindo Lebeti Pambiwake Isaac, the man still stood up by faith, stood up by knowing what God is with him. And he went ahead and and did the impossible and did the craziest things, I mean, in the eyes of the people of his day. Hallelujah. He went and planted by faith. Because you are driven, you are propelled by faith in this time we are in. And I want to say to you, uh, if you are a student, let me just do this thing categorically. Mobile Bible, Isaac Washanyela, in spite of the drought, he still broke through. And I pray that in spite of all setbacks that you may you may have been facing that are before you, obstacles that are before you, may the favor of God, the blessing of Jehovah cause you to still break through. Because the God of Isaac is our God, is your God. If God helped Isaac to break through during this difficult uh, economic uh, drought situation, of his day and he helped him to break through surely god will help you to break through dear child of god and may god cause you to really break through the bible says after the man sowed he harvested a hundredfold oh i pray for somebody may this year be a year where god will turn things around for you turn things around to your favor and such that you'll see yourself breaking through in ways that you never imagined possible hallelujah so let's just go into the, you know, the, the specific of things here. What can you do in the long end, you know, as your survival strategies? It's very important because the, the dimension that I want to zero in, in the dimension, I would say, don't fail uh, to position yourself in a space uh, where you will continue to be productive, where you'll continue to be fruitful, where you'll continue to, to be able to generate money, where you will continue to make progress. Let me repeat. Position yourself in such a way that regardless of COVID-19, you will continue to make the progress you desire. Number one. Number two, you will continue to generate the good money you need. Number three, you will continue to achieve and realize your goals and your dreams in spite of the COVID-19 pandemic. It's key. These things, unfortunately, that I've just mentioned, it is not God will make them happen. It is you. God will just back you up and assist you in what you are busy making happen, what you are busy pursuing. So, Ujehovah are a baby city. That's why when he created us, he gave us a mind to think. He gave us his image. He gave us his likeness. He invested in us his Holy Spirit, which is his presence with us. So God expects us to take advantage of all these investments that he has placed in our lives uh, to push our lives forward using them. Praise the name of the Lord. So if you are a student, let me start with student. I know if you are someone who was on the academic pursuit path, then you've been disturbed. You've been disturbed by COVID-19 through 
the lockdowns, the shutdowns of schools, colleges, and universities, and we introduce a new normal, which is called e-learning, learning from home. And because it came just suddenly, there was no sort of preparation, orientation prior to that. It just happened by default because COVID-19 never gave anyone any chance. It never gave the nations of the world any chance to have a good prior preparation. So now that you are a student and you are under this new normal, you must learn from home. Don't make excuses. Don't slack. You know, don't say, what can I do? I'm now sort of giving up. I'm slacking. I'm no longer fully applying myself because I can't go, go to class, you know, and have interactions with my teachers, my lecturers. No, remove the excuses. Lo Isaac Lesfunza Ngaila, Wagner Matima, but he came up with survival strategies. Now you've got to come up with survival strategies because regardless of COVID-19, you must still continue very well in pursuing your academic in your academic pursuits. So you need to apply yourself, teach yourself now to, to, to master the e-learning strategy, the e-learning, you, you, you know, way of education. Praise the name of the Lord. And you, you, you've got to push yourself. So what you need, number one, as a student and also as an individual, you must just possess this virtue, possess, uh, you know, the, 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 this mindset called determination to succeed. This is very big. Success requires determination. It means before you experience it, you must first possess what is called determination. You must be determined to make it. Hallelujah. When Jesus came to this world, he was determined to carry out his father's mission. He was determined to do his father's work and finish it. We read about this in the book of St. John, chapter 4, verse number 4. It says, Jesus told the disciples, I've come to do my father's will. He said, my father's will is like my food. The man came determined. So as an individual, as a student, as a lady, as a man, you must be determined to succeed. Never embrace it and accept it as an option. Would say, I may fail. No, failure must never be your option. Say after me, say, failure is not my option. I was born, created by God for success. Hallelujah. So the first virtue you need to pro pro possess is the determination, the commitment to succeed. You must tell yourself, I will succeed. Because remember, success begins first and foremost as a mindset, in, as a way, the way you have set your mind. Success begins as what? As a mindset. That's why Jesus said, speaking words that are, you know, are also implied in what I'm, I'm, I'm telling you now. He said, if you can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. This is Mark chapter 6, verse number 23. So you must, sorry, Mark chapter 11, verse number 20. Chapter 9, verse number 23. Mark chapter 9, 23. He said, if you can believe, if you can believe. So you must believe. I believe in myself that I will never fail. I mean, I believe. I believe I will never fail. I will believe I can never fail in life. I will make it in life. Praise the name of the Lord. And uh, a lot of people are wishing me happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Please, let's focus on what I'm sharing now. Because to me, you know, apart from receiving your Happy Father's Day wishes, I want to ensure that I play my role in shaping your future, in equipping you, in mentoring you, so that you become a champion. As a man who is almost 60 years old now, I'm duty-bound to shape the next generation. I'm duty-bound to play a very pivotal, important role of being a father, a shaper of those who are coming after me. And that's exactly what I'm doing now. So I was still on this point. Be determined. Be determined to succeed. It begins with what? With determination. If you're a student, be determined to make it academically. Tell yourself that degree that I'm earmarking, nothing will stop me from getting it. Nothing will stop me from acquiring it. Nothing will stop me from finishing university, 
getting a good degree and proceeding to go and get a good job. It begins with what? Determination. If you are a person that is looking for a job, you are jobless. You must be determined. Tell yourself, I will get a job with the help of Jehovah. The same God who told Isaac, I will be with you during this economic hardship, during this famine. That same God who never changes. He say, I'm the Lord God, I do not change. He will help you, dear brother. There. He will help you, my son. He will help you, my daughter. He will help you, my brother, my sister. He will help you break through into your own good things that you desire. And just as he helped Isaac, he will help you. You will get that job. But it begins with what? With determination. I want to, I want to drill this very strong. Be determined to succeed. Be committed to succeed. Be addicted to success. You know, to, 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 to make it in life must be your addiction. You must be addicted. Utichel, tell yourself, Utichel, Utichel, no, I was never born for failure. I was never born to struggle. I was never born to lose in life. I will make it because I'm created in God's image and likeness. Praise the name of the Lord. And please embrace the declaration of Jesus. Be one who is a believer, number one, in your God. Believe in your God that God will never fail you. God will never forsake you. Number two, believe in yourself that you have all it takes to make it in life. Say after me, say, I have all it takes. I have all it takes to make it in life and I shall make it. You have all it takes to make it in life and you shall make it. We must believe, uh, you know, in God's plans, good plans for our lives. God never created us in his image and likeness and then to let us fail and struggle, you know, and be forever disappointed in this life. God created us to make it in life, but you need to have the correct mindset. You need to have the correct mindset. And I've just told you about it. It is called determination to make it. Say, I'm determined. Say, I will make it. Because if you believe that you will make it, you will make it. And I've made two other important uh, statements now. I said you need to you need to radically believe in the Lord your God. Because those who believe in the Lord will never be put to shame. Trust your God. Know that your God will never fail you. Never be in a situation where you feel like you are blaming God. God is always with you. God is always your backup. God is always, you know, planning good things for you. So believe in your God. Number two, believe in yourself. Believe that I can make it. Believe that I can do it. Believe that I can get it. Believe that I can break through. Hallelujah. I can start what needs to be started. I can start that business. I can get that degree. Hallelujah. It begins with what? Number one, determination. Number two, believing in your God and believing in yourself. Uben a positive attitude. Believing that I was born to make it. Utichel, prophesy, become a prophet of your good future. Prophesy over yourself and say, I, myself and me, will make it in the name of Jesus. I will make it with the help of my God. I will make it with my determination to make it in this life. Praise the name of the Lord. And then number three. You need to be someone now who has a clear-cut vision. Oh my God, this is awesome. Clear-cut vision. You can never become anything that you do not envision. Did you hear what I've said? You can never become anything that you have never aimed if you never plan to become successful, you are most likely to become a failure. And for you to become successful, you have to be a person of specifics. What do you mean, Apostle? Write it down. Decide right now, right now as you are, speak, as, as you are watching me. Decide right now as you are watching me. What is it I want to become in my lifetime? Number one. Number two. 
What is it that I want to achieve in my lifetime? What are you going to become? I decided one day. I've, I've, been, I've been three things in my lifetime. The first thing that I was in my lifetime was to be an employee, a worker. Number two, in my lifetime, I became a business person. Number three, in my lifetime, I became a pastor, a preacher. Number four, in my lifetime, I became what I am now. I'm a life coach. Did you hear what I've said? You've got to decide. You, you must be a person of specifics. You, you, the different phases of your life must be well structured. You've got to have your life plan written down. You heard what I said. When I finished school, I became a worker, I was employed. But because I had a mapped out life, after some few years, I then became a business person. And then while I was in business, God intercepted me. He called me to become a pastor, a preacher of the word. So I became a minister of the gospel, a preacher, a shepherd, a pastor of God's people. And then, number three, I became, like what I've told you now, I became a life coach. I will spend now the rest of my life as a life coach, teaching people to live their lives the right way, according to God's plan, living their lives in a way that will cause them to be fulfilled in their lifetime, to fulfill their assignment, their purpose, the reason they were born for. Hallelujah. So I'm a life coach. So even you as an individual, you've got to decide what is it that you want to become. What are we going to know you and celebrate and appreciate you for? You've got to decide. The Bible in Habakkuk 2.2, 2, it says, write the vision down. Making clear, make it clear on paper, Habakkuk 2, 2, so that those who read it may run with it. People who interact with you, they must readily see your, your clear pursuits, your defined pursuits. They must never struggle to, 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 to see where the, your, your, where the direction of your life is going. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So decide what you are going to become. Isaac decided. His father was a livestock farmer. He had a lot of cattle, a lot of sheep, a lot of donkeys, a lot of whatever. But Isaac decided that I'm going to do something different. He chose his own trade. He said, I'm going to be a, 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 a food producer. He became a, 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 a farmer of food produce. Hallelujah. That's how he broke, that's how he, 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 made, he made it in life. The Bible said, we read it together, it said the man became wealthy and continued to be, to be rich. Hallelujah. He's the first man who invented the boreholes. He, he was the one who now dug water from the ground. And you can know, because the man decided to go into the farming business to produce food, he was the one who was the decider of the price in the market. How much you know, a, a, a kilogram of corn was going to cost. He was the price broker. He was the one who was deciding. Hallelujah. And he then went on to make water available. He was also selling water. So you need to decide as an individual, what is it that I'm going to become? What are the things that I'm going to achieve in my lifetime? As a student now, COVID-19 has taught you and shown you that... Uh, you cannot just pick any degree. You cannot, you cannot just pick any course. You've got to take, choose a degree, a degree that will be on demand, that will be relevant, even post-COVID-19, relevant in the 21st century. I mean, degrees like those guys that are in, in, in the IT, guys in IT, guys in the, medical, uh, in the medical field, you know, those people will never be out of jobs. Hallelujah. You know, uh, the guys that are in, 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 in the science, uh, in the computer science field, they will never be out of jobs. Hallelujah. Because the world now is run by what is called the science of things. You know, so, you know, so now the world is being run technologically. So you must be someone who, who, who positions yourself correctly 
I mean, if you are still in, in that opportunity, in the chance of, you know, developing yourself educationally, put yourself in the medical field. You'll never be without a job. You'll never be without an income. Put yourself, you know, in the, in the, in the computer uh, science field. You'll never be without a job because computers are running our world today. Hallelujah. You, you, you must be someone who is where it matters. Put yourself in the, you know, in the, in, in the media and technology science space, you know, because those guys are making it possible. I'm communicating with you now because of the, you know, the media science. So it's very important that you correctly position yourself. Don't go for a course after you get that degree. You are running all over the show. You can't get a job because you picked a, 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 a degree that is not on demand, that is not relevant, that is saturated. Hallelujah. People of your degree, people of your qualification are too many, and there's no many jobs for them. You can never commit that tragic mistake. And I pray that fathers and mothers, parents, please, if it means going back to your child, maybe your child is already somewhere, you know, almost going to college, university, sit down with that child, look at what that child is pursuing, look what, where, 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 where that the way, where, what the child is pursuing will take that child to. It's very important. Because you don't want to spend all the hundreds of thousands of rands you are spending educating that child. At the end of the day, the child continues to depend on you. Hallelujah. That will be very tragic. Hallelujah. So we must decide. As a student, pick a very good degree, a degree that is on demand, a degree that will have the potential to pay you well, a degree that will ensure that you are never out of a job. Hallelujah. And if you are an individual, you are looking for a job, maybe you have already passed through schooling opportunities, you know, it's no longer possible for yourself to de develop yourself educationally. It's very important that you must do what I call a uh, acquisition of skill you need to acquire a particular skill maybe a sporting skill maybe a business skill but you must definitely acquire a particular skill that has a great potential for giving you the kind of money you desire because you know there are many people out there some of you you are watching me now you find that you are a lady. All you know is just to go to the salon now that salons have been opened. You are so excited because you'll be spending hours and hours, you know, doing you doing your hair, you know, doing your facials, doing your nails, doing your toes. And you are you, you know, you are physically you looking so good, so attractive when the mass self you are to shoot and you know your profile pictures, you know, you are there with your beautiful looking hairstyle beautiful looking, you know, nails and blah, blah, blah. But unfortunately, you've not developed yourself skill-wise. That's a tragedy. I mean, you can imagine you are looking so good, you've got a nice picture on your profile, but you've got no skill that will give you good money. That's a, that's a tragedy. Because you know what will happen is that you are good looking, males, you know, gentlemen, my daughter, my, my gents will come after you, you know, when they discover that you don't have a job, you are not able to generate your own money, they will probably just use you for sex. And they will never really respect you. People can't respect you if you don't have control and influence. You see, what gives you influence in this life is the ability to generate your money, the ability to sustain yourself with your own money. Then you get to be respected. Praise the name of the Lord. So I'm just giving this as advice, as snippets. It's very important that you secure a something. If you never made it to school to get a good university, a good university degree that enabled you to get a good job, as I'm talking to you now, please, you must ensure that you acquire a particular skill, a skill that will ensure that you are able to generate money well out of that skill. I've said it before, already a good business skill or a, 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 an arti artistic skill, maybe a music artist, a, 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 a sportsman, a sports person or whatever that you know you you discover yourself to be gifted in praise the name of the lord and i'm still on this point decide what is it you want to become decide what is it you want to achieve and then 
I then detoured on these things that I'm mentioning. Gumko Gamuntu wa Jehovah is very important because many people are stressed, they are frustrated out there, they are looking for someone to pray for them, they are looking for magical happenings, they are believing God for miracle money. I mean, those things are all delusions. Hallelujah. You need to work with your hands because even God in his word, he says he blesses the work of your hands. The Bible says everyone must work with, it, with his own, her own hands to earn his or her own living. Praise the name of the Lord. And I'm giving you the guidelines along uh, that matter. Praise the name of the Lord. So you must decide what you want to become. And then number three, develop yourself accordingly. So once what decide, I mean, I want to go into business. I mean, I want to be self-employed. I mean, I want to be an entrepreneur. You must develop yourself accordingly. Hallelujah. So it's either you are developing yourself educationally so that you get a good degree that will earn you a good job, get you a good job, or you are developing a particular skill so that you'll use that skill to generate your own money. Hallelujah. It's very important because otherwise you will be a frustrated person in this world. Our world is very competitive. Our world only focuses on people who add value. This world will never pay you out of pity. You'll never get money out because you are pitied. This world will, world will pay you for what it gets from you. It will pay you for the service you give to it. Hallelujah. So it's very important that you correctly position yourself correctly. Please, ladies, they must get this warning from me. I'm a father. In daughter, men will never respect you if you are dependent. You are not able to generate your own money. You'll find that most of the time you are taken for granted. Most of the time you are abused. Most of the time you are just, you know, uh, cheaply treated because then you've got no influence. What do you mean, pastor, I've got no influence? You don't have your own money. You are independent. So what I'm sharing with you will help you to uh, achieve what is called financial independence. You must be someone who's able to get your own money. You say, Pastor, okay, it's difficult for me to go into business, difficult for me to acquire a skill. I, I'm just looking for a job. Fine, look for a job. And if you are not working as we speak, go out. Do what the Bible says in Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. It says, ask and keep on asking, you shall receive. Seek and keep on seeking, you shall find. Matthew 7, 7, knock and keep on knocking, the door will be open. That's what that verse says in the Amplified Version, Matthew 7, 7. God wants you to keep on asking, keep on pushing. Hallelujah. You saw the story of Isaac here. He dug a well of water. The Philistines came and quarreled with him. He lost that water. But did he give up? He never gave up. So God wants you to keep on pushing until you break through. You don't give up. You don't throw in the towel. So if you are looking for a job, you know, package yourself well, dress nicely, be attractive, you know, and then go out and look for that job. And but it, it's always best to look for a job that you have already selected and then sort of skill yourself accordingly so that when you go to that company, you say, I, I've already been skilling myself and I think I'm able to do ABC, ABC, ABC. But you must, you must go out there, look for a job. Don't stop knocking at the doors of companies. Don't stop sending out those CVs, those applications. Don't, don't stop asking people, uh, you know, who may have connections, could say, if you know any place where I can go and get a job, please, you know, let me know about it. Keep on seeking, keep on knocking, keep on looking, keep on asking, you shall get. And I want to say this, if you are not employed as you are listening to me now, any job is better than no job at all. What did I say? Any job is better than no job at all. So make sure that you know, at least you get some kind of a job because the first job you'll get will become your stepping stone, your springboard to start now working towards your bigger dream. Praise the name of the Lord. And those who are already working, if you are working, you have a job already, you are in a company, you are working, please never stop to upskill yourself, to develop yourself because as you know, our world is evolving. This world is moving to so much and too much. And a company is now are looking at ways of making profits, you know, with fewer staff. They are downsizing. 
So it means the kind of personnel, the kind of staff, the kind of employees that they will keep in the companies are the employees that are productive, highly productive, highly efficient. Are you understanding? Adequately skilled, who know their story. There's a statement that I always make that you must strive to be someone who is good at your game. Whether it's a job, that job you are in, be good in that job. I mean, let your company celebrate you because they know that this guy made things happen in this company. This lady made things happen in this company. Hallelujah. This is with the exception of those who are civil servants because if you are a civil servant, you know, we thank God for civil servants and for governments because they just hire a lot of our people and they don't have all these, uh, you know, fears of being made redundant, of being retrenched, you know, government really secures so many lives. But my focus now is on someone who really wants to break you know, who, who really wants to rise, you know, to the cutting edge level in life, if you want to stand out in life, you know. So in that company where you are working, if you are working already, keep on developing, developing yourself. Understand all the schemes of that company so that you are always a key player in that company. Are you hearing me? So that it, it becomes difficult for that company to ever think, you know, of replacing you or getting rid of you because you are a key player. Hallelujah. And I believe that with these things I'm sharing, I'm helping someone. We are under the topic, you know, coming up with winning strategies, coming up, you know, with new survival strategies. All these things I'm sharing with you, they sum up to what I'm talking about, survival strategies in the days we're in. Hallelujah. It's very important that all of us reposition, you know, correctly in the days we're in. Make sure that where you are, you are on demand. Now, just to zero in on those who want to go on business, what you need to do to succeed in business? Very simple. You need to secure a product that will be on demand. A product that when you sell, it will be on demand. I mean, if you are going to go into business, business is all about offering products, commodities, or offering services. So you need to succeed in securing products or a product that will be on demand that you will sell and make good money out of it. So this will call for brainstorming. You've got to think tank, you've got to serve the internet, you've got to look around in your in your environment, look around in your market situation and see what is it that I can sell as a product and break through and make money. Isaac here decided I'm going to provide corn without saying some bill. I mean, but without saying a lagging me, him lot out decide I would say, uh, Likil or normal coco calling Malin. What pins was in the open and then a man in the Fagema tongue a man in my sense of a man. Him lot out decide I was not out saying a man, La Palca loading Malin, no man literally Malin. You see, you must do the same. You've got to decide. Now, maybe I say Ben the money a whole lot the money you're earning is not enough. Please, you cannot fold your arms and be complaining, holding a pity party, malinani, as you only luto, and you're busy complaining. Complaining never changes anything. You've got to go out there and look. You've got two eyes. You know what are those eyes for? They are not looking at how they are not looking at how other people are dressed, looking at what cars people are driving. Those eyes are for looking for opportunities. You must be a hunter, a scouter of opportunities. Opportunities out of which you can generate good money. Hallelujah. A person who's wise, a lady who's wise, a young man who's wise, you must be a hunter, a scouter of opportunities. Go out there, look what product can I sell, you know, and, and make business and make good money out of, or what service can I offer? Because this world is looking for either products, commodities, or services. That's all. Hallelujah. So you must, you must have one of these things. Good services that you may offer. Hallelujah. And then people will pay you for that. I'm, and I'm leaving all to you because God has given you the mind, the brain to think. And you also have the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit will help you. And if you are really stuck, I've got a very wonderful uh, solution for you. It's in the book of James, chapter 1, verse number 5 to 7. 
God says, is there anyone who lacks wisdom? In other words, is there someone who does not know what to do? You are stuck in life. It says, ask God for wisdom because wisdom is the ability to know what to do in any situation. Wisdom is the ability to know what to do. He said, is there anyone who lacks wisdom? James chapter 1 verse 5, he must ask God. God will give that wisdom generously. He will give you very freely. He does not discriminate. Hallelujah. Ask God to give you wisdom. Ask the Holy Spirit your helper to help you think out. Come up with survival strategies in the days of social economic hardships, these days that you are in. Hallelujah. And one thing I will say to you, ensure that you make yourself a person of value. Whether in a company where you are working, you must be of value in that company in that organization where you are working. Hallelujah. And if you want to do well in business, secure a product that will be on demand or offer a service that will be on demand, regardless of the COVID-19 challenges. Hallelujah. And I now prophesy and pray over you. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord God be with you. May the God who ensured that Isaac broke through during famine during economic hardships. May that same God help you to break through. Whether you are at school, may you break through economic, uh, educationally, regardless, in spite of COVID-19 challenges. If you are in business, you are a, a business aspirant, you want to go into business, or you are in business already and you are challenged, take the advice and the coachings I've given you and look out for a unique service you can offer and make money out of it. Look out for a unique product, commodity you can secure and sell and make money out of it. If you are working, keep on upskilling and developing yourself so that you are always on demand. Avoid, run away from being redundant. And if you are stuck, you say, Pastor, thank you for what you have shared with me. I'm going to go to my drawing board now to brainstorm, to think out of strategies. Uh, out of which I can now become a champion and also attain my own, own financial independence and make it in life. Praise the name of the Lord. Salvation has given us great benefits because salvation does not only cause us to become children of God who are loved by God, but salvation connects us to the champion, to, to the extraordinary strategies called the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is able to help us navigate successfully through this life because he is the spirit of wisdom. He's the spirit of knowledge and understanding. He's the spirit who guides us. He's the Holy Spirit who teaches us all things. He's the spirit of success. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of success. You must just know how to talk with him you know, get counsel from him, get guidance from him. Ask God to fill you with wisdom so that you may always know what to do. And may the Lord bless you. May you prosper in everything you will do. May God give you winning strategies in Jesus' name. Say amen. I say may the Lord God of heaven give you winning strategies, winning survival strategies post-COVID-19, so that after COVID-19 and even during COVID-19, you will still break through, just as Isaac broke through during the famine in the land of the Philistines. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord prosper you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. May you break through in all your endeavors. May you succeed in all the things you are earmarking. May all your plans succeed. May you come out with a winning strategy. May you do well in your lifetime. I bless you with the apostolic blessing. I bless you with the favor of Yahweh El Shaddai Adonai Elohim. May the God who helped Isaac to break through, to succeed during famine, during difficult times, help you to succeed, to break through, to make it during this difficult time. May God cause your desires to succeed. May God cause your plans to succeed. May the God, the Lord I serve, give you winning strategies. May you become the champion you were born to be. May you become everything you were created to become. May you never fail in life 
as a pursue justice, I bless you with all my heart. If you are a minister of the gospel, may the Lord give you winning strategies for now that we are in this COVID-19 situation so that your ministry will continue to make impact. Your ministry will continue to succeed. May you succeed in your academics if you are still in academic pursuits. Usati, usati, in your education. May you break through and do well. Get that degree of your dream. May you get a breakthrough in business if you are desiring to go into business. I'm just blessing you now. May you break through into all the things and desires of your heart. May you become a go-getter. May you break through. May you champion. May you prosper. May you make it. In the name of Jesus, may your children also make it. May your children break through. May your children succeed. May your children do well. I bless you with the blessing of Jehovah Yahweh Adonai Elohim. May the Lord, the God of heaven, ensure that you never fail in this life. I never believe anyone was created for a life of failure, so I destroy that spirit of failure from your life. I shatter it. I smash it to the ground. I declare that you shall make it, and you must declare after me and say, yes, yes, I shall make it in the name of Jesus. I believe in the Lord my God that he will help me, and I believe in myself that I was created, created, born uh, to make it in this life, and I shall make it. May you make it in the name of the Lord. And if there was sickness in your body, I destroy that sickness in Jesus' name. I crush it by the mighty name of Jesus. I uproot it from your body in the name of Jesus Christ, my Lord. May you do well. May your business break through. May your business concept, that business idea that you have, may it be a successful business idea that will generate you good money. In the name of Jesus Christ, my Lord. May all the deals that you are pushing, all the contracts that you are negotiating, may they succeed in the name of the Lord. May the favor of the Lord be upon you. Hallelujah. May all the, all the good things that you are targeting, you are earmarking, may God cause them to happen for you. I speak a very big blessing over you. I say may doors of good things open for you. In Jesus' mighty name, may the Lord God bless you. And above all, may you love the Lord your God. May you be devoted to him. May you trust him. May you rely on him. May the God of all mercy help you to break through and to succeed in life. In Jesus' name, this is Apostle Justice. Thank you for indulgence. I'm sure I believe I've made a meaningful contribution into your life. And may you do well for his glory. Amen.